Katie, well, damn it, we are going to make it happen with her. First, we had technical difficulties last week, and then now she is in the heat of it with this relief package expected to come out now-ish. And uh, a lot, big deal for the restaurant industry. But I wanted to keep my promise to you that I'm going to be here every day. So I'm here. I'm going to ramble on for a little bit. Thanks for anybody who decides to watch for more than 30 seconds. I appreciate you. As always, ask me some questions, comments. I'm, I'm interested. How are you doing right now? It's crazy. It's crazy. Every hour, every day here in Denver. I know other places are dealing with it. We just got the stay at home order from the mayor here yesterday, created a little pandemonium because it was said that liquor stores would be shutting down and dispensaries only, let me make sure I get this right. Only medical marijuana dispensaries would stay open. Recreational would not. Needless to say, people flooded the liquor stores and recreational dispensaries, creating the opposite, the exact opposite of social distancing. So that was uh, a little bit crazy yesterday dealing with that. Uh, me personally, I was like to tell you a little bit about what's going on. I woke up at, I don't know, seven in the morning to my alarm going off for our Mexico trip. We were supposed to be leaving for Cabo today. Oh, it hit me. I, I knew it was coming. We knew we had canceled it for quite a while, but having that alarm come up that we'd be hopping on a plane right about now for Mexico uh, yesterday, excuse me, right about now, this time yesterday, uh, definitely hit me. So we had a, a little virtual uh, happy hour with uh, Betsy's family who we were going with yesterday via Zoom to uh, <laughs> just cry in our margaritas a little bit. That's all. Uh, but it was funny. It got me thinking about virtual gatherings. I think that that's going to be a massive space because we're such social creatures. We're always looking for that connection. We're going to find it wherever, however, whenever that we can. And I think that Zoom, Google Hangouts, these type of forums are going to become massive spots for socialization over this brief period. So super interested to see kind of how that plays out. I know some restaurants are starting to do that. I know people are doing that and tagging the restaurant that they picked up food from. I think it's really, really smart if restaurants start to think about hosting those parties and creating that high touch hospitality that we do in person in restaurants and seeing if there's an opportunity to kind of own your own space in a virtual landscape. So I'm super fascinated from that. So that was really uh, uh, some of the revelations of yesterday for me. Uh, once again, always, I'm going to tell you who's watching. I'm going to tell anybody who's watching to also share this with other people. Go to the Best Serve podcast page for the COVID-19 restaurant information thread. Please, please, please put a comment of following on there so you can get notifications and updates. I'm sure we'll have a little bit on the relief package coming out any minute now and there's going to be a lot that affects people in the hospitality industry for sure just the high level stuff that i've seen so far a lot to unpack there so get in there following share that with other people because people need to get real-time information and i'm out there hustling trying to find as much information as possible for you also on the best Served podcast page is the hashtag 86 coronavirus virtual tip campaign we're looking to get about 100 people signed up who are working in the hospitality industry. Put your information on there, your Venmo, your PayPal. And then we're going to go and turn around to a lot of the donors that we have supported over the years and years and years and put millions and millions and millions of dollars into that ecosystem to try and ask for that hospitality to pay paid for it once again. So go ahead and uh, get into those two threads in the page. One of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about today was some of the hyper local ways that we can support, you know, curbside is a big way that we're supporting restaurants. However, uh, there's a lot going on as far as what distilleries are doing. I've been really, really impressed with distilleries so quickly turning around hand sanitizer as that has become such a necessity and a hot commodity and 
a lot of hoarding going on around it. If you're hoarding, stop fucking hoarding. Your three giant cases of toilet paper from Costco, you'd have to take a shit a hundred times a day for the next three years to go through it. Same with sanitize, hand sanitizer. So be kind and gracious to other humans. Don't go crazy right now. So the distillery is doing that. And not only do I think it's something that they could have done and then sold the product and been an amazing, amazing asset for people. A lot of them are giving it away for free, which is unbelievable. And these are small businesses who are absolutely hurting right now, like everyone else. And for them to take that initiative to turn around so quickly and to be doing it a lot of times for free, which I don't think is a necessity for them to do. I don't think that that would be the requirement we ask of them. And of course, they're doing it because they believe in supporting community because they're built around small communities and individuals living in and working in that community. So distilleries, very, very impressed. Farmers. Farmers is something that I've been pondering a lot. And uh, Linnea Covington, who's a writer, a freelance writer, writing a lot here in Denver, uh, had another article come out in Westward about what's happening with farmers, how they have put so much into seeds and the work has been done. A lot of that work has been done across the country right now. And now they're waiting to be able to pull that, that product out of the ground and they have nowhere to sell it because so many restaurants are shut down. So Linnea actually the other day dropped off some radishes on her way back down as she picked up some delis of bone broth and Thai curry from our house. She dropped some radishes for us. Amazing little exchange there. Farms. I'm really interested how we connect with farms. They're going to have a lot of products dying in the fields. And if there's ways that we can support. So if anybody has ideas, connections, if you are a farmer, please reach out because we definitely want to find ways that we can connect people with food because there's a lot of people that are in need of food. So make sure to connect with your local farmer, connect local farmers to us. If there's resources, there's a lot of things happening. We talked yesterday about Operation Family Meal. That's a endeavor that Avanti, Brava Pizzeria, Chow, and Kessid Wellness are all collaborating on here in Denver. I'm sure it's happening in other parts of the country as well. So continue to cultivate those relationships to be able to get food to the people in need, to be able to create the opportunity for farmers to get their products into market because they need it. Absolutely. Uh, the uh, curbside pickup. I'm interested to hear from anybody who is on the consumer side. Are you happy with curbside pickup? What's happening? Are you feeling confident and comfortable getting out there, going and getting curbside? Are you using DoorDash and delivery apps? I'm very interested in how that's playing out so that we can kind of understand what what the the equilibrium is, I guess. Like, How is that kind of falling into place in your day-to-day -day life? If you are working in restaurants, own restaurants, how is that experience for you? I know it seems like it's been kind of feast or famine from what I've been hearing. The people that I've been talking to, some restaurants are doing insane numbers more than they ever have. Other restaurants, it's crickets and it's really hard to break through the white noise of everybody trying to get people's attention for curbside. So I'm interested in what has been working and what has not. For me personally, I always believe it's hand to hand, one on one, being able to build that community from a, a small nucleus your direct community, the people that have been there before building out from the people that actually give a shit about you and finding out who those are versus blanketing people with buy, buy, buy and sell, sell, sell and going ask, ask, ask. I'll continue to talk about that for people. That's all I got. It's going to be a short show today. Uh, I should probably be more prepared for guests to potentially have to run out the door to take care of their businesses, take care of themselves, or be ready for legislation with whatever's happening. So today we got a short little show. Like I said, I just wanted to be committed to making sure I come on here every single day and banter with you, bring at least a little bit of value if possible, get you guys connected to some information. Who knows when somebody will be watching that this connects with them and gives them the opportunity to better their situation because all of us need some support in that for sure. For sure. Tomorrow's show, 
I, oh, wait, wait, hold on. I forgot. I first got to do my weird thing of trying on hats. Yes, this, the first ever piece of merch of apparel for brewed food in what, 2014? Damn. 2014 brewed food became a thing, an idea that sparked into some, some fun experiments and stuff. So this is the first ever piece of uh, merchandise that we did. Send me hats, please. I know a few of you have reached out and said that they are in the mail. Send me some hats. It started as just a way to have not a completely white background. And now it's something fun to be able to try on a hat every day. Give a shout out to whomever. I don't know why I'm doing (laughs) this. Like you'll be able to read it better or something. Just awkwardly trying on hats. And I'd love to support you, your business, your art, whatever it might be. And hey, maybe a couple people see it and actually care. Unlikely, but I'm going to keep doing it. Tomorrow, I'm going to have Micah Lauderdale from Dallas, Texas. I saw Micah in the comments. Thanks for that, Micah. Micah is a lightning rod for the industry, always supporting and collaborating and a big promoter, especially in the Dallas area for what's happening. He's actually, you can hear his voice on randall broad's episode of the podcast so go to bestservepodcast.com or a facebook page or wherever you listen to podcasts and you can listen to that episode awesome talking about filipino food and then what's happening in dallas micah is randall's hashtag unsung hospitality heroes and we get to talk a little bit tomorrow we're going to talk to him because i'm very interested interested excuse me of the perspective kind of from the line level you know he's a He's a, a, a self-proclaimed like line grunt. He loves it on the line, loves being behind the bar, just in the fire, in the mix. So I'm interested to see his perspective. As we've mostly got a perspective from owners, from executive chefs, from salary people, from people kind of in the support mechanism or in legislature. So I'm interested to get his perspective tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow. 10 a.m. to 10.30 Mountain Standard Time. That's noon on the east, 9 a.m. on the west. We'll be back. Appreciate you as always. Much love. Be safe. Be healthy. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Cheers.